Coming up on Out and About Art, you'll get a look at an exhibit that's showcasing some young local talent, learn about a first year contest at our Winter Haven Theater, and gain some culture from three exhibits on Polk State College's campuses. It's all coming up, so stay tuned. Hello and welcome to Out and About Art. I'm your host, Dion Spires. VSA Florida is the Florida chapter of a national organization founded in 1981. VSA stands for Very Special Arts and their mission is to make the arts accessible to everybody. They work with children through a number of programs providing children with disabilities with art learning and cultural experiences. In an effort to do just that, they recently hosted an art contest through the Polk Museum of Art to allow students the opportunity to have their art displayed in a gallery amongst their peers. I made it out to the reception for that exhibit to show you some highlights from that day. you that don't know who VSA is, because I'm sure there's a bunch of you that are scratching your heads right now, we are a statewide organization on arts and disability. We provide, we support, we champion arts education and rich cultural experiences for all people, including people with disabilities. We are a member of a strong affiliate network throughout the country and the world, 35 states, and 52 countries around the world have VSA organizations. VSA Florida partners with organizations throughout the state, um, primarily museums um, and cultural centers where they're willing to showcase the work that is done within the school systems, which is sort of our meat and potato work that we do. We do artist and residency programs in all 67 counties around the state. And when we have a chance, we like to have a classroom be given the opportunity to come and visit the museum, become inspired by an exhibition, so to speak, and then go back in the classroom, uh, create art that parallels the work of the museum in some fashion, and then again come back and see their art hung. So that's our typical museum partnership. The Polk County School System art teachers are invited to have their students create artwork that they can bring to the Mayfair Art Festival and be showcased here. And from that, uh, it is adjudicated by the museum where they pick 50 to 100 pieces to then be on exhibition, which is what this exhibition is all about. I really am grateful for the fact that there is more and more talk about how important the arts are to our educational system. Every year that conversation gets stronger and stronger. Sir Ken Robinson is, uh, he's a very, very important leading figure in this conversation. And if you just Google Ken Robinson, you will be very entertained and enlightened by what he has to say about education and creativity. He's actually, he's one of my heroes. And he believes that the arts are not only a wonderful thing to have, but they are absolutely fundamental to our education. Our brain is very complex. It's not just the compartment that deals with math or just the compartment that deals with language. And creativity is born out of integrating all those parts of our brain. So I'm very, very grateful to the school board that believes very strongly in the arts, that has supported it for many, many years. It's a model in that way. So why the arts? Why is it so important? It's a universal language and a huge, powerful tool for learning. It levels the playing field among everyone. There is no difference in creativity compared to ability. Everybody has the, the ability to do art. It 
encourages creativity, collaboration, partnerships. Studies show language skills, math skills up. And probably the most important, it really builds self-confidence. Well, that brings the program anytime full circle, you know, to be able to have an exhibition. Um, but it's really about the student, for them to then uh, have their art at a beautiful venue such as this uh, gives them an opportunity to feel really good about their work. Many of these ESC students don't get these opportunities. The typical student does in many ways. So the students with disabilities many times don't even know what it's like to get a certificate of completion, you know, or of recognition that they did such a great job. A large portion of that is their self-esteem, you know, making them feel confident that uh, in something, that they're doing something well. For every student exhibition that we have, the Polk Museum of Art purchases a work of art. It's the Purchase Award. We have a student collection, and with that student collection, uh, we offer student artwork to various um, organizations around the county. So we have student artwork in Bartow at the courthouse, in the state capitol building, and there are a few people that have approached us wanting student artwork in their buildings as well. So uh, the artwork that we have goes out into the world so people can see what a wonderful job our teachers and our students do. Today's Purchase Award, a work in Tempra called In the Forest, Julian Perez, please come up and get your award. I love drawing some picture in a piece of paper. Beautiful art. I love art because that art is the best of all <laughs> to make pretty pictures and put in a museum. Every one of the art pieces in the gallery is a winner. I want you to know that. I know there'll be ribbons in first place, second place, and on, but every one of you is a winner because your artwork was displayed today in Polk County's finest Polk Museum of Art. Don't ever forget that. I'm so proud of each and every one of you, and continue your arts education continue your passion and continue your dream because that's what it's going to take to be successful in the future. The reception was an exciting occasion for all of those involved, and the kids were so excited to have their art on display. VSA Florida has a number of programs within the school systems, and they're always striving to provide opportunity to those who are involved. For more information on VSA Florida and their upcoming events and programs, visit www.vsafl.org. In a community theater setting, everybody gets a chance to audition to be on stage or volunteer to help as a technician backstage, but what some do not receive is the chance to direct a show. One of our local theaters is looking to change that with a brand new event and a unique one to our area. I'm on location here at Theater Winter Haven to speak with some folks about that event and how it came to be. With me today, I have Dan Chesnica, the producing director of Theater Winter Haven, and Tom Mesrobian, the coordinator of the Director Showcase. How are you guys doing today? Doing great, Dan. Thanks for having us. Thank you guys so much for being here to talk about the event today. Now this is the Theater Winter Haven New Horizons Director Showcase, and it's the first year that you guys are holding the event, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're giving it a shot. We're throwing a lot of things up against the wall and seeing what's best for our community. And it's a really unique event. I've never heard of a Director Showcase, at least not here in Polk County. 
Can one of you give me some background on what the event is so that the viewers kind of know a little more about it? Well, I think it's a really new hybrid of a couple of different things that have been around for a long time. One of which is the theater festival or the theater uh, competitions which go on at uh, junior colleges or schools around the country where they'll have students come in, they'll do a prepared piece for judges and they'll get evaluated. And it's great for the, for the actors or for um, uh, student directors to get that shot. Um, and then the other thing that it brings in is the uh, atmosphere of like a, a fringe festival. Uh, fringe festivals are something kind of where I've cut my teeth for the last few years and they are kind of the new horizon of theater. There, there's fringe festivals all over the world and these are uh, places, uh, in this case in the Orlando Fringe Festival, it's the Orlando Shakespeare Center and they give the opportunity for groups to come in for very little amount of money, produce usually original works um, for a wide audience and they do staggering business. Uh, they had 50,000 patrons in their last festival um, uh, this past year and, and there's festivals all over the world starting in, in Edinburgh, uh, Scotland. So it kind of brings, uh, this. the showcase brings the um, the fun and that uh, community uh, feeling of, of a festival and mixes it with these uh, theater competitions. So it creates this kind of new thing where directors are going to get a chance to come in, direct uh, a piece that they've selected, utilizing all of the different uh, things that Theater Winter Haven uh, that, that we offer them, like the, they get to use the sets uh, and the shop to build their own sets, actors we make available for them, all the technical disciplines, the, the, the costumes and makeup. So they get to use all of that um, free of charge and produce their, their shows. And then we get people to come in and watch the shows and at the same time have a good time with all the things that are going on with the festival part of it. So it's this new uh, hybrid thing that we're coming up with that Dan pitched to me and we're going to see how it works. Now, Tom, you say that it's sort of a hybrid of a few things and that Dan pitched it to you. So, Dan, how did, how did this event come to be? What was the brainchild? It was actually one of those times where a lot of things were happening and it all converged on this one idea. Um, Notably, I went to the Orlando Fringe Festival to see Tom's play, Simpleton, which was patron's pick and the highest grossing show at Fringe. Wow. And so I was in Orlando, I had to travel an hour to go see the guy who's been acting on our stage <laughs> and doing this great work here for years and years and years. And I'm thinking, why can't we provide opportunities for people like Tom to go ahead and uh, explore these types of uh, outlets to display their art. So that was one thing that was playing on my mind. Another thing that was playing on my mind is I really want to be a great uh, corporate citizen, for lack of a better word, and provide the people of Winter Haven great opportunities to see things and provide people from out of county and out of our local area a reason to come in and experience all the great things that Winter Haven does. So I've been working with our county folks and they're actually co-sponsoring this event. Um, the Visit Central Florida folks. So a multi-day festival made sense because we can do a lot of things over a couple of days that would give people a reason to be here. And this isn't going to not just going to be the art that we're doing. It'll also spill out into the parking lot where we plan on having food trucks and great entertainment and some bands playing in between. It's going to be a three-day festival where people can do more than just sit in a dark theater. There are a lot of other activities that will be happening. A lot of people who have participated here at Theater Winter Haven make their living in the arts. But what we haven't done is focused on directors. And I think that that's really because it takes, a long, it takes a long time. It's more than, you know, people think of directing as an artistic endeavor, and it is. But it's also a wildly difficult exercise in logistics and planning and scheduling. And rarely do people get taught those skills, I find. So having just gone to Fringe and seeing how brilliantly Tom executed on all of those you know, checked off all of those boxes, I thought, wouldn't it be great if I could give these people who asked me to direct, and there's not a week that goes by where three people don't ask me to direct <laughs> something. Why not give them an avenue to be able to do just that, but more than just throwing them to the wolves, give them some tutorial, give them some mentorship through Tom and through our other folks that will be here to show how they can be able to do that effectively. So with all of those goals in mind, uh, my team, Tommy Altman, Molly, Sarah Beth Reynolds, who works on our grants, we all sat down and came up with this idea for the New Horizons Directors Festival. And in the same breath, we said we need to make sure that 
Tom Azrobian can be part of this because of the wild success that he has had in this kind of endeavor. You know, he knows more about this than I'll ever hope, <laughs> hope to know. And um, so as soon as we were able to secure his participation, we knew that it was something that we really were able to do. And these folks are going to have a series of milestones. Um, you know, it's not just, we're not just throwing them to the wolves. As Tom said, they will have all of the resources of the theater. Um, but beyond that, we're having a series of checkpoints and um, mentoring that happens through this process. So hopefully they can pick up some skills that will allow me to take a risk. Mm -hmm. And, you know, because I have 4,500 subscribers that come here to Theater Winter Haven, yeah. we sold over 30,000 tickets to see our various shows last season. I can't responsibly just take someone off of the street and say, here, give this a go, direct a main <laughs> stage show. I need to know that these folks have the chops to be able to execute artistically and also have the skills to be able to manage schedules and budgets and all of the other things that come along with directing a show. So I want to widen, you know, cast a wider net for all these folks in our community. And I thought this was a great way to start down that road. Here's the opportunity to say, come on in, direct, and we're going to support you and invest in you as we go along the way. And then uh, once we, they get through all of these checkpoints and they get to the final event, uh, the audience members who come to see the shows will get a chance to list their favorites. And we'll pick an audience favorite, and that person gets a $500 cash prize. And all of the uh, finalists, the three finalists we selected from all the applicants that we got in, those three finalists will all get the opportunity to work on a Theater Winter Haven show in a capacity, either as an intern or as an assistant, or however it works with the director that's directing that. They're going to get to come on and really be part of a team that's actually producing a main stage uh, show. Very cool opportunity for those involved. So. How long are these scenes or productions that they're, um, that they're putting on for the audiences? They're a maximum of 40 minutes. Okay. Uh, so they're usually one act plays or uh, individual or, or original um, uh, submissions. And from those short plays that you've received thus far, the submissions, are you able to talk at all about the different genres or types of shows that um, the audience can expect to see if they're coming to the festival? They run the gamut from uh, one that's very heavily uh, musical oriented from a musician standpoint uh, to uh, one woman shows to um, uh, Tom Stoppard play, which is one of the greatest living playwrights in the world, but uh, very intellectual stuff. He's one of my favorites. So you got a wide range uh, of, of the submissions that have, we've received. Now, as far as uh, who we actually pick, that's you're going to have to come to the show to see to see that. And I think it's awesome that you guys are using this opportunity to give back to the community, and not just the arts community, but the entire Winter Haven and Polk County community as a whole. Now, Dan. I understand that last year was your, um, your first year as producing director. So would you say that this is the first of many events that you're going to launch to help give back to that community? The short answer is yes. I mean, I'm really, really committed to um, honoring Norm Small's tradition and everything that he had done over that first 45 years and taking the things that he, the, the seeds that he planted and helping them germinate. I, you know, Norman was completely entrenched and committed to making sure that there are opportunities for everyone in this building. So I think you're, you can see, you can expect to see over the course of the next year and the years to follow, me taking those ideas that Norm started and trying to um, build on them a little bit. You know, there'll be a lot of things that we do that'll be focused on diversity and serving our entire community rather than just a select few. There's going to be a lot more emphasis on things that we do outside of this building, um, where we'll go into schools and we'll go into um, assisted living facilities and doing a lot of stuff, bringing our art out into the community. And there are just so many things that we want to do, including renovating the building and making this a, have a real sense of place. So over the course of the season, you can, you'll see us gradually changing our entire lobby and making it a little bit more beautiful and a little bit more elegant. Um, redoing our entire inside of our theater, including all new seats, to make people a little bit more comfortable. Changing the lighting in the house uh, to affect the mood and to have better production values of our shows. So all these things are in the works in one form or another. 
Um, the new director series is just the first one that we've had an opportunity to publicize. So yes is the short answer. <laughs> There's going to be a lot of things that we do to um, incrementally improve upon the great place that Norman started. Now before we go, can we have one more rundown from either of you of tickets, dates, times, um, and how, how they can get in contact with you for more information? Sure, the festival starts November uh, 11th on Friday night. Uh, we start that at 7 o'clock and the shows, the three submissions will be presented at that time. Then Saturday we're going from noon until we're done. Um, and, and that'll be the three shows as well, as well as our uh, theater competition piece that'll be performed on that day, and that's the day we're gonna have food trucks and bands and things. And then uh, Sunday, uh, we will have the three shows again, so people can, they don't have to see all three in one night. They can come back and see one a day or two, or if they really liked one, they can come see it again. And then Saturday night, we'll finish with Eric uh, Gutman's From Broadway to Obscurity, then we will uh, announce our audience favorite, and, uh, and have a big uh, celebration. So that's the scope of the festival. The tickets again are $20. Uh, they're available at theaterwinterhaven.com. And uh, again, for students, only $10 uh, ticket. Well, thank you guys so much for being here today and letting me come out to talk about the event and get a little tease so people know what to expect. I wish you guys the best of luck with the event this year. Thanks so much, Dan. Thanks. Appreciate you. Be sure you make it out to see what the contestants have put together for the showcase. Come on out to Theater Winter Haven on November 11th through the 13th to support this local talent. For more information, visit www.theaterwinterhaven.com or give them a call at 863-294-7469. September was Hispanic Heritage Month and Polk State College and Club Hispano de Lakeland teamed up to celebrate by opening exhibits by Hispanic artists in three different locations. These exhibits featured Hispanic artists from the Florida area, and with an exhibit on Polk State campuses in Lakeland, Winter Haven, and Lake Wales, there was a wide variety of beautiful art to see and plenty of culture to take in. Take a look at these highlights to see the art and learn more about those involved. What we've decided to do was to partner with um, the Club Hispano in Lakeland to feature artists during um, Hispanic Heritage Month. Um, and so at each one of our galleries we host, which is three, Lakeland, Winter Haven, and here in Lake Wales, we've been hosting artists um, primarily from Cuba and their art um, during the month of September to October. It was really started under our Office of Foundation uh, with Tracy Porter and some others and our Provost, um, Dr. Martha Santiago, as well as our President of Board of Trustees, um, Dr. Teresa Martinez, to partner with them and see how we can not only partner with them through their events that are held in um, Lakeland and Winter Haven, but also to show the art um, here at our galleries at Polk State College. College. The artists had the opportunity to enter a contest last year and um, from that selection or from those artists we were able to um, select some, some pretty nice artists and some pretty good really beautiful artwork and ask them would they mind featuring their artwork in our gallery and for one of the artists it's been their it was their first solo exhibit so we were excited to be able to showcase Alexis Martinez Martinez um, Buelo her artwork uh, and it be a solo art show for her we have a very diverse uh, faculty and student population and it was it was really um, monumental for us to be able to just to showcase the artwork of the Latin community. It's truly been an honor to have been selected as one of the artists from Club Hispano de Lakeland 
and Polk State College. My roots are here in Polk County and it was really nice to be able to come back and work together with the other women. I never really had the opportunity to express myself in a whole collection like this. Normally it's a few pieces here or there or you know we have an opening you can put your pieces out but to have a collection with other women who are out there doing what they want, following their passion, following their honor and their Hispanic culture, it's just it's really great to be able to do it with them. I really just needed a creative outlet. I was a biology and chemistry major in college and it was just so meticulous that when college was over, I needed to do something with my time and to get all these feelings and expressions out of me. So just painting came along again. I've always done it my whole life, but I took a break for a while and I'm happy that I went back to it. I feel very passionate that I was able to have the freedom to do it. I know that my family came from Cuba in search of freedom and the search for success over here in the United States and I feel like if I would have done anything other than follow my passion in art, I would have done my family an injustice. Each piece has a little piece of me in them and it's, I don't know, my identity almost. Aside from being a wife and a mother, this is me, my art is me and to have it on display and you know, you get a little nervous that you're going to get critiqued and how are people going to perceive it and what are they going to feel from it and it, it was exciting. I've been painting for seven years. I was in marketing in my previous life and seven years ago I decided to start painting professionally. I do a lot of acrylic and oils, abstract, atmospheric, landscapes. When I first started painting I started with uh, geishas. I did a lot of geishas and they were very popular and the more I started you know uh, continue painting I'm really into the landscapes as you can see and they're all abstract landscapes from Treasure Island where I live and Cuba where I you know I'm from. I'm Cuban-American so all that is part of my inspiration for this collection. This is the exhibit is from form to color and it's all about um, the, the colors, like, you know, it's abstracts and it's a whole process of, you know, painting and covering and until you reach, you know, the look that you want to achieve. I've been a part of the uh, Club Hispano de Lakeland. I've been exhibiting my artwork for the last three years, so it, it's nice to be here again. It's an honor to, to be a part of uh, you know, this movement and, and to share my art with all the students and hopefully to be an inspiration to them. Uh, I, I know for sure that I've been inspired by the other artists that have been exhibiting their artwork, and so I hope that I can bring that as well. Those exhibits represented the Hispanic culture beautifully through Hispanic Heritage Month. Unfortunately, those exhibits are currently closed, but you can continue to expand your knowledge of Hispanic culture by keeping up with Club Hispano de Lakeland on their website, clubhispanodelakeland.com. If it's simply art that you're looking for, Polk State College has regularly changing art exhibits on all of their campuses for students and the public to enjoy. Keep up with their current exhibits by visiting their website at www.polk.edu. That's all I have in store for this month, but stay tuned for upcoming art events in your area. As always, thanks for joining me and tune in next time for more art out and about.